Hi, I'm Susan. Thanks for choosing Decorating Magic. Today I want to show you how to use mud paint. I've already painted three things and I will walk you through the fourth, but first I want to tell you a little bit about mud paint. It is a new furniture paint product designed to give a vintage feel. It is similar to chalk based paints in that most times you do not have to prime, although a light sanding is recommended. Mud paint has a smooth matte finish that is perfect for furniture painting, distressing, and antiquing. Mud paint has unique earthy ingredients that give it a smooth texture and matte finish. Mud paint is not chalk based, so it does not feel gritty and has a creamy smooth finish. Mud paint has its own sealer too and is almost ready to launch their own line of clear and dark waxes. Mud paint is compatible with any water-based clear coat or wax, so I decided to mix and match the products here. I chose not to use a dark wax or antique glaze because I wanted you to see how pretty the color was and what a nice matte finish the sealer has. Now a piece like this really only requires one coat of clear coat, but something with high traffic like a kitchen table or a coffee table, I would recommend at least two coats. It's important to let your piece dry 24 hours before you put on the first coat of sealer. And if you're planning to use a second, you need to wait an additional 24 hours. Then wait an additional 24 hours before you actually use the piece. And really, the longer you can let it cure, the better. This little lamp is good to go. The next thing I want to show you is this little box. It was a raw, unfinished wood box from the craft store. I sanded it down lightly. I used one coat of smoke paint. I distressed it and then uh, I put a black glaze on it, an antique glaze, and then I sealed it with mud paint sealer. I personally like using my own antique glazes because I can control the color. I like my glazes to be black, more on the black side, whereas the waxes really are much more brown. Uh, but it's just a personal choice, and it's great that you can mix and match products with the mud paint. Now let's talk about the table. This is a relatively new and inexpensive table with a slick factory finish. So I sanded it down lightly and just to give it a little tooth. One quick note about sanding. If you're sanding an old piece, you have to assume the paint is lead and you must be very careful with it. You wear a mask and then be careful with how you dispose of the sawdust. Uh, on this table, I used two coats of smoke paint and then I distressed it and then I used clear and dark wax to seal it. One note about waxing. If you're going to use a dark wax, I put on a coat of clear wax first just so that the dark wax goes on evenly. Uh, and then I top it off with another coat of clear um, just to give it a little extra protection. I found that if I use the dark wax directly over the paint, I sometimes get a real splotchy, blotchy look that I don't like. Let's look at the drawer. I chose to crackle the drawer. I use black paint for the undercoat and smoke for the top coat. I really like how the tiny lines crackled. Crackling is a little tricky to do because you have only one chance to apply the top coat. You can't go back over the paint with the paintbrush because the paint will start sliding off the surface. Mud paint is great for crackling because of its good coverage. I crackle in small areas like this drawer because it's very difficult to get a good result on a large plane. One other note about drawers, try not to get the paint on the top or the sides because even just a few layers of paint will prevent the drawer from closing correctly. Let's get started on the piece I chose to paint. I chose this small picture frame because it has lots of detail and you'll really be able to see those nooks and crannies once I put the paint and glaze on. I'll just wipe it down, hit it with some sandpaper and apply the first coat. So I'm just going to go over the frame with some fine grain sandpaper. We're not trying to get down to the finish or anything. We're just trying to give the piece a little tooth before we start painting. Especially on these slick surfaces, they really need to be roughed up a little bit. Be sure and wipe off or brush off your piece to get all that gritty sawdust off. I'm going to open up the can of paint, show you the color. You can see it's nice and thick and smooth and creamy. 
I'm using a natural bristle paintbrush. This is an artist brush because the piece is so small. This is the brush I use when I'm painting larger pieces. It's called the Shortcut and you can get it at most home improvement stores for about five dollars. I like it though because it's got a nice angle and I like the fact that this, um, the handle is short and rubber so it doesn't get in the way and it doesn't fatigue your hand. Before I start painting, I just wanted to show you that I've put some wax paper here behind the frame just to protect this part from paint spatter. Um, I know you won't really see that um, once you put a picture in, but if you're selling your products, you, you, know, you just want to keep your drips and spills to a minimum. So I'm going to go ahead and start painting. It's best to use thin, even coats. And with this brush, you can really kind of get down into the nooks and crannies and then just sort of smooth it out. See, it's nice and thick. It doesn't really drip. It gives very good coverage. And it's a great color, too. Make sure you get your inside rim on the frames and your painting frames. Nice even strokes. Try to catch any drips that you make or any puddles. I'm going to let this dry for about an hour and then I'm going to put the second coat on. Dry time depends a lot on temperature and especially humidity. Alright, so that's pretty much done with the first coat of paint. Look over, look over your piece and make sure you haven't missed any spots. I hate doing chairs because I always miss a leg. I went ahead and painted the second coat and let it dry overnight, so now we're ready to distress the piece and then add the glaze. Now most painters use fine grit sandpaper, especially on a delicate piece like this. That would be, oh, anywhere from like 150 to 220. So you're really just kind of distressing the areas that would receive the normal wear and tear on the corners and the sides. You can really start seeing how that detail is popping out. Personally, I use coarse paper a lot of times because after all, you are distressing. But I'm using, a, I think, about a 150 on this piece. When you're distressing, stand back and look from time to time because sometimes it feels like you've been sanding and sanding and sanding and then you step back and look and it doesn't even look like you've done anything. There's no right or wrong. You just distress it to whatever level or don't distress it at all. Some people don't like that look. But like I say, step back and look from time to time because sometimes it feels like you've been doing a lot and you really hardly have touched it. So that's kind of getting there for me. I'm going to do these edges a little more. But that's good. I'm going to move my bowl of glaze over for a minute. Um, because I am going to wipe off the frame here. I'm going to use a little brush. So you don't want that gritty stuff in your paint or in your glaze. Okay, I'm going to get my little piece of wax paper. and insert it here. And then we're going to begin glazing. Now I'm just using a glaze, an antique glaze that I made myself. Um, it's just 
one part color, and I usually just use craft paint, just you know, acrylic craft paint from the craft store. Um, I use the burnt umber color. And it's one part color and three parts glazing medium, and just mix them together. And again, I'm using the same uh, natural bristle artist brush. So what I'm going to do is stir this up, and then I'm going to apply it liberally all over the frame, and then I'm going to wipe most of it off. So it looks very dark. Again, I'm getting it down into those nooks and crannies. The glaze doesn't change the color of the paint, just the translucency. But again, you know, you get your brush down into all those little nooks and crannies. And then I'm going to be wiping most of this off. I'm going to go ahead and start. The glazing medium gives you a little time, buys you a little time to play with. So I really just take a clean rag. I usually use like t-shirt material. But see how you can, it's getting down into those nooks and crannies. Now on a smooth plane, like the side of the frame, sometimes you can have a little fun and go like that, or you know, wipe it off, make patterns. Um, it's not so important on a small piece like this, but on a large table, sometimes it looks a little contrived when you're just wiping it off in a straight pattern. So I really like how this is looking. You see how it's really gotten down to those nooks and crannies. I try to take the edge and try not to leave too much gloppy spots. Now, my recipe is one part color to three parts glaze, but if you like yours darker, you can just increase the color amount. If you like it lighter, just add more glazing medium. I kind of like it like this, and see, I, this is more towards the black. As I mentioned, the waxes are more brownish, usually. So that kind of gives you an idea. After we're done here, uh, we're going to wait 24 hours and then we're going to use the mud paint clear coat to seal it and then we'll be done. I applied the glaze 24 hours ago and now it's time to seal it. The first thing I'm going to do is stir and I would like to mention here that with any kind of clear coat it's better to stir than shake. If you shake the sealer you're going to get air bubbles and you don't want that. So stir your product well. Again, I'm saying using the same type of artist bristle brush. Normally, I would not dip right into the can because if it's got any sort of paint on it, you might contaminate your whole can. So we're just going to brush this on. Use thin, even coats. If your piece has more than one color, it's best to seal each color separately as the back and forth of the brush through the paints might make them smear together. This stuff goes a long way, so I'm, I've only dipped my brush once, and I think that's probably going to be enough to do this whole piece. So that's a good thing. Now, this piece is only going to need one coat of sealer. If you were doing like a kitchen table, and you needed at least two coats, you needed to wait 24 hours in between coats. This will be dry to the touch pretty soon. And that's about it. Make sure you don't have any little puddles. Now, this sealer looks best when the paint is really smooth. On rough surfaces, it has a tendency to look a little glossier, but we'll be able to see that for our size selves when, we, when this is dry. Well, that's about it. I did notice that the frame dried nice and matte. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. I know you'll enjoy using mud paint products. Thanks for watching.